Hello, this is Alan, welcoming you to the 1963rd edition of the Enfield Talking Newspaper. Dateline 24-7-2014. The readers this week are Sonia, Phil, Joy and myself, with Ian on the controls. The items that we will be reading come from our local newspapers, the Enfield Gazette and Advertiser and the Enfield Independent. They are their copyright. Our title music is Country Rock Polka, composed by Pat Pri, Fernand Bouillon and Harry Breuer, and performed by Jean-Jacques Perry, and is used with his kind permission. Local stories include The Heat Is On, Alcohol-Related 999 Incidents A Concern, Fundamental Weakening, and The Existing Chase Farm Site Is Not Fit For Purpose. If you are experiencing any problems regarding your uh, Enfield Talking newspaper, please phone Diane de Jersey on 020-8805-6578. She is your listener's representative and will be pleased to help you. And now Sonia will read the first item of local news. Sonia, over to you. Thousands of homes across the borough could be on the verge of being heated by a council-run company using the waste from an industrial plant. The Lee Valley Heat Network is a limited company created and run by Enfield Council and will be formally brought into being if given the official thumbs-up by the Labour-run Council's Cabinet at a meeting in the Civil Centre. The company was dreamt up as a way of delivering heating to residents in new build estates across the borough from a central system that authority bosses propose will bypass private energy giants. The long-term plan is for waste from the Edmonton Echo Park to be harnessed in the form of heat and steam and delivered to housing estates in the borough via an underground network of pipes. The Echo Park in Advent Way, Upper Med Edmonton, is close to the proposed site of the Meridian Water Regeneration Scheme, and the Council wants the first phase of the development of 5,000 new homes to be heated solely by the energy generated from the plant. However, while the Meridian Water Scheme is still in its infancy, the current redevelopment of the Ladderswoods Estate in Ladderswood Way, New Southgate, is also being tailored to accommodate the scheme. Developers are creating a centralised boiler system installed deep underneath the new homes that will heat all the flats in the development. And engineers have created capacity within the designs specifically for extra pipelines to be fed in at a later date. This will mean that eventually... Once the heat harnessing technology is set up in two or three years, the energy can be delivered directly to the estate. Speaking to the advertiser at the Ladderswood building site, Cabinet Member for Economic Development, Alan Sitkin, said that when the pieces of the puzzle fell into place, Enfield would boast the first economic and low-carbon heat network in the capital. This scheme will for a this scheme will provide affordable heat as a council-owned company, and so it should be somewhat cheaper than a private energy supplier, he said. Mr Sitkin added that while the cost of setting up the system of using waste heat would be in the region of £20 million, the council would not be footing that bill alone, as they would secure funding from the Greater London Authority as well as support from the North London Waste Authority. Changes to the way council decisions are scrutinised will fundamentally weaken the means to hold the authority to account, opposition councillors have claimed. Under the latest plans passed by Enfield Borough Council, the six panels that currently hold the council to account will be reduced to just one scrutiny panel. The previous panels individually analysed decisions made regarding crime, children and young people, communities, health and well-being, regeneration and older people. 
This will now become one panel covering all six areas. Changes will also include axing area forums, which previously allowed councillors and council officers to consult with members of the public on local issues. These have now been replaced by ward forums, which will be led and organised by councillors and have no input from council officers. The new scrutiny measures have been brought in two months after Labour extended its majority at the council following the local elections in May. Councillor Terry Neville, leader of the Conservative Opposition Group, has condemned the latest changes and told the Enfield Independent this was a fundamental weakening of scrutiny. He said, These changes, however, L Labour dresses them up, amount to a fundamental weakening of the scrutiny process at a time when it has never been more needed. It is also a real loss of opportunity for many new members, on both sides to learn about the different functions of the council and all of this with no quantified savings. Leader of the council, Labour member Doug Taylor, said, Our objective is to have an efficient, effective and economic council. The reality is that we must make savings and success is built on change. We will continue to scrutinise and we will have public meetings to make scrutiny more effective. Councillor Neville appears not to understand the proposal on ward forums. The seven area forums will be, will be replaced by 21 ward forums. This increases, not decreases, accountability and contact with the public. In, in addition, three associate cabinet member ACM roles have been added to the council's constitution giving three existing councillors the chance to each represent a third of the borough and report directly to the Cabinet. These roles will last at least until the next general election, providing more focus for the Council across Enfield. However, such roles have been heavily criticised by the opposition, who claim this is a form of gerrymandering. During a meeting of the full Council last Wednesday, Councillor Ertan Hura lambasted the description of the new associate cabinet members in the council report. The description reads, The new role will not have formal executive decision-making powers, but has been designed to provide a focus within the areas covered for coordinating member engagement and providing a focal point around regeneration and other strategic development initiatives on a cross-ward basis. Councillor Herrer said... This is complete and utter gibberish. This is nothing more than the council using taxpayers' money to give their candidates a better chance of winning in the general election. Councillor Neville added, They are paying three of their members, including Bambos Sharalambus, who will stand against David Burroughs MP in Enfield Southgate at the general election, an extra £10,000 plus to campaign for votes in the run-up to next May's general election. It is nothing more than the party politics paid for by the taxpayers of Enfield, which, given they have refused to rule out future council tax rises, I find incredible. In response to the criticisms of the latest changes, Councillor Taylor said, Scrutiny will be as effective as it ever was, just less expensive. ACMs are designed to make sure geographic areas get special consideration in decision-making and consultation on wide areas such as on designated area planning is a lot more effective. His, Councillor Neville, suggestions are pure nonsense born from a desire to throw mud rather than constructively debate. There is a lot of criticism around ACMs which is rubbish. We are not the only council to have ACMs related to their cabinet, but we want them to be spaced out. Excessive drinking is costing the taxpayer almost £150,000 a year. In a Freedom of Information request by the London Conservative Group to the London Ambulance Service, figures show that call-outs due to drunkenness in Enfield have cost the borough £146,000 in the last 12 months. The statistics also reveal 632 call-outs were made during this time. In comparison to the other boroughs of London, 
Enfield ranks 26 of 33. Neighbouring Haringey came in 11th, clocking up 1,035 call-outs at a cost of £240,000. The worst affected borough was Westminster, with a call-out bill for £891,000 for 3,481 call-outs. Sutton came in as the cheapest borough for drunkenness at £90,000 for just 391 incidents. Paul Gates, Deputy Director of Operations for Enfield, said, The number of alcohol-related 999 incidents in Enfield is a concern. If our staff are dealing with patients who are simply drunk, they won't be able to take care of patients with life-threatening emergencies, for example, people suffering a cardiac arrest or those with serious injuries. We're not against people having a good time, but think about the consequences of excessive drinking on your health. Drinking too much can put you at risk, impair your judgment, affect the quality of sleep you get, and in the longer term, it can lead to serious illnesses like liver or heart disease. Oh. Patients and residents will have to wait until November to see the first details of what the new Chase Farm Hospital is going to look like. But what is becoming clear is that the Royal Free London NHS Foundation Trust, which took over the running of the hospital in the Ridgeway Enfield and Barnet Hospital earlier this month, is planning major changes. They include knocking down Chase Farm's iconic clock tower and surrounding buildings, and almost completely rebuilding facilities across a smaller site. Speaking after a meeting with councillors, health commissioners and MPs on Monday, the Trust's chief executive, David Sloman, told the advertiser that a strategic outline case for the redevelopment of Chase Farm will be put to the Trust board next week but admitted that this document would not be made public. We are still working through the scale and scope of the development, he said. The existing Chase Farm site is not fit for purpose, with buildings far apart and with many in a bad state of repair, and there are five 35-year-old oil boilers which are very inefficient. The capital investment will reduce revenue costs. Asked whether existing services will be maintained, Mr Sloman said, All the services set out under the Barnet, Enfield and Haringey clinical strategy will form the clinical footprint for the development. We will, redevelop the, sorry, we will redevelop the site in accordance with the strategy. The Royal Free expects to submit a planning application to Enfield Council in November, when further details will emerge. The Trust will receive £263 million in transitional funding over the next five years and has said that it will invest £100 million in the Chase Farm site to modernise facilities, funded partly by the sale of land there. Andrew Panicker, Director of Capital and Estates, said that the Trust aimed to keep Chase Farms, Highlands Wing and the multi-storey car park. Other than that, he admitted, it would be a complete facelift. Mr Sloman added, there will be a proper consultation with stakeholders, staff and neighbours living near the hospital in accordance with planning rules. And we will be sitting down with the clinicians and nurses to see what is the best possible way to, of organising all this. The full business case for Chase Farm's redevelopment will not be published until early the summer next year. The Trust is planning to start initial works next spring. And the main building work in the summer of 2016. It expects the works to be completed by spring 2017. Sonia. A schoolgirl is starring in a film aimed at encouraging parents to carry out science experiments at home to rouse their children's enthusiasm in the workings of the natural world. Six-year-old Misha Lapouz of Grove Gardens, Enfield Wash, and her parents, May and Jason, 
feature in Giant Bubbles, a short film showing how to carry out a science experiment involving giant bubbles using only household objects to learn about pressure and forces. The film was commissioned by the Royal Institution of Great Britain as part of Experimental Bringing Science Home, a series of ten films aimed at encouraging parents to carry out exciting yet simple science activities at home over the school holidays. Misha, who goes to Eastfield Primary School in Eastfield Road, said, I enjoyed playing with and testing how to make bubbles with different shaped and sized holes. I learned that the bubbles got bigger when the hole I blew through got bigger and was really surprised that no matter what shape I used, all bubbles made a sphere shape. I had a great time making huge bubbles using a baking tin and then making even bigger bubbles with string, a key and two wooden spoons. Physics teacher and filmmaker Alom Shaha, who produced Experimental, said the project aims to create a library of films suited to families of different cultures. He said, We want to eventually create a library of films that meet the needs of families from different cultures, those where English is not the first language, and those who have children with varying needs and abilities. Misha's mother, who works as a science teacher at Camden School for Girls, added, What I've learned as a science teacher and as a parent is that children are naturally curious and always ask lots of questions to find out about how everything works. Playing with bubbles was a great opportunity to get Misha to investigate simple concepts and discover the answers herself. I hope this will encourage all families to show their children different ways to explore science in a fun, cheap and easy way. The film starring Misha is available to view online at www.rigb.org forward slash experimental. Seven more films will be released throughout the school holidays and all will be free to watch. A sewage works notorious stench could be gone with the wind after Thames Water submitted transformation plans. The company is set to revamp Deepham Sewage Works in Pickett's Lock, Edmonton, for £250 million and have given their plans to Enfield Borough Council. Regular protests and heated council meetings have taken place over the years due to the foul odour, the target of a Stop the sink Stink campaign. However, prayers may have been answered at Thames Water, which claims it will reduce the smell by 99%. Head of the project, Nick Butler, said, Submitting this planning application is great news for local residents and water courses. The upgrade will significantly reduce odour from the sewage works as well as improving local river water quality. We have spent an extra seven weeks having very productive conversations with Enfield residents, listening and acting on their priorities, needs and concerns. This time has been invaluable in putting together what I now believe to be a very robust plan to upgrade Deepen's sewage works One, we are fully committed to delivering. The work has to happen, and I'm delighted that all of the people we have spoken to agree with the revised plans to include extra measures to deal with the smelliest part of the works. The upgrade, which will take around three years to complete, will allocate 20% of jobs needed to revamp the site to local residents. Donations from a bakery are spearheading two charitable projects in Enfield. Warburton's is supporting 30 charities this year through grants and other means, such as staff giving their own time as volunteers. Of those that have applied for support, the bakery in Millmarsh Lane has donated £20,000 towards helping the Enfield Citizens Advice Bureau and Enfield Carers. With its donation... 
The Citizens Advice Bureau in Nags Head Road, Ponders End, is building four new interview rooms, which will allow its advisers to speak to and support more than 5,000 additional clients each year. Enfield Carers, which works with unpaid carers from its base in Baker Street, Enfield, will use its donation to support its own benefits and employment advice service. Among some other projects to receive financial support is a charity that provides young people with access to sports coaching qualifications and another that supports vulnerable children. Warburton's also donates some of its produce to other charities and organisations. In June, 4,500 items were handed out. Good Causes are able to apply for grants worth up to £250, while larger projects can be considered for investment worth between £1,000 and £10,000. A total of around £26,500 will have been handed out by the bakery during the 12 months up to September this year. Vanessa Taylor, community champion at Warburton, said, We have another 20 applications to review this year. If we cannot support them financially, we will always look to help them in other ways, such as donating time or products. Warburton's is a family business, and community work is at the heart of what we do. Families, communities and businesses, they're all interlinked, so if we create benefits for one, we create benefits for others. A former reservoir has been transformed into more than 40 homes. Hope they got damp proof coursing. Sorry. The Draper's Lane Reservoir in Enfield is now the site of 45 new homes, of which 14 are available as affordable housing. They were built by Fairview Homes, which drained and demolished the former reservoir before purchasing the land. The project, known as the, Rena sorry, known as the Renaissance, will hold homes ranging from one-bedroom flats to two-bedroom family homes. Sales and Marketing Director Jim Holliday said, We are extremely proud of our Renaissance development, both for its design and for the range of housing we managed to incorporate to meet the needs of the people in Enfield. Fairview New Homes is deeply rooted in Enfield and we are committed to providing new private and affordable homes here. We are also proud to be investing in infrastructure for the community of which we are part. Based in Lancaster Road in Enfield, the, counts, the company has now completed two developments in the town during the past year. The former office building at Wenlock House in Eaton Road was converted into 36 flats. The company now plans to build 46 new flats after buying the former council car park in Cecil Road, Enfield. <laughs> A 92-year-old woman has become the second victim of a bogus policeman. The elderly woman of Armfield Road, Enfield, had jewellery and money stolen when a man claiming to be a policeman knocked on her door on Sunday, July the 13th. Marion Wallace, daughter-in-law of the victim, who asked not to be named, told the Enfield Independent that the man claimed there had been a recent burglary at the house. She said the man knocked on her door and tried to convince her that she had recently been burgled. He made his way into her home and took money and jewellery from her house. It was a terrifying experience for her. This is the second incident to be reported after a woman in Hansart Way less than a mile from the most recent incident, had her belongings stolen. On that occasion, the victim opened her door to a man claiming to be a policeman on Sunday, June the 22nd. The man told her that he was there to investigate a loud bang that had been heard earlier in the day. He quickly walked into several rooms in the house before leaving. The woman later found several items had been taken. The man is described as white, in his twenties, five foot seven inches tall, of medium build with short brown hair. He wore a brown suit and spoke with a British accent. 
Police are continuing to make appeals for information into this latest spree. Businesses are being encouraged to get involved in a new project which will boost profits and increase the use of green energy supplies. Enfield Council is leading the Retrofit London scheme which will support small and medium-sized enterprises to gain access to energy saving and carbon reduction markets, secure industry standard accreditations and acquire government funding. The project is being funded by the Greater London Authority, the European Regional Development Fund, Enfield, Haringey, Waltham Forest and Lewisham Councils, Enterprise Enfield and the North London Chamber of Commerce. A launch day yesterday at the Dugdale Centre in London Road, Enfield Town, was attended by firms from the property management and construction sectors, as well as manufacturers and distributors of energy-saving products. Alan Sitkin, Cabinet Member for Economic Development, said, Enfield Council is committed to supporting local businesses and we want to do all we can to help them tap into the energy-saving markets. This sector is recognised as a key area for future growth and job creation, and we want to make sure our businesses can access these new opportunities. Vulnerable families and refugees are among those who will benefit after voluntary groups were given iPads. Home Start Enfield, which helps vulnerable families with a child under five, were one of four groups to receive their iPad from Enfield Borough Council Cabinet Member for Community, Councillor Yasmin Brett. Central African Youth, a group that helps refugees integrate into British life. Breathe Easy, which offers support for people affected by lung conditions. And the Enfield Caribbean Association were also given the tablet computers. Councillor Brett said... Thanks to this generous donation, these four community groups will benefit from better IT and will be able to help their clients even more. We are delighted to be able to present these groups with iPads and hope that they will be able to use them to continue their good work in supporting the people of Enfield and improving their quality of life.